We all know that most of the sporting events have been either postponed or canceled at this point. So how important was it for the various leagues to make these decisions? Well, listen, I mean, you know, um, being in the ABC family uh, here at ABC News, you know, we're getting literally almost minute to minute, hour to hour updates from the CDC, the World Health Organization, top infectious disease and public health specialists, um, not just here in this country, but around the world. And I bet, you know, the NBA and, and all of the professional leagues are, are getting the same information um, just a little bit behind us. And I think that they took the appropriate and responsible public health steps, um, you know, and, and really are leading by example. If you think of what we all can do personally as individuals to help slow the spread of this virus and this outbreak um, and contain it, and as, as you're hearing this term, flatten the curve, which means really protect our health system um, and reduce the number of people who get it and spread it out over a bigger period of time instead of having uh, you know, places be inundated. They're taking those steps not just on behalf of an individual, but on behalf of an organization, a league that literally has the potential to affect hundreds of thousands of people. So it was aggressive. And in my medical opinion and, and following what the World Health Organization is recommending, um, medically appropriate. Dr. Ashton, obviously appreciate the great, great work that you've been doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. There was, there was, there was clearly a... a I don't want to say dismissiveness, but even though we saw this being reported and we saw the alerts that you and others in the medical profession was doing, you know, just to alert us to how serious this was, there was a lackadaisical approach on a lot of folks' parts, to, to be kind, to say the least. In light of the decisions that have been made, clearly that nonchalant attitude per se has evaporated and it has received the level of attention that it so richly deserves. How helpful do you believe that will be for us as a society moving forward in the immediate future? Well, gosh, I, I mean, I hope and think it will be very helpful, but let's drill down on that uh, for a second because you brought up some really important points. You know, first of all, in medicine and science, we like data, we like information, we like past history on things. This is a new viral pathogen that we have no history and almost no data on. It's less than three months old. So I think that the points you raised, which are absolutely true, not only came on the part of some public health officials, um, even, by the way, some doctors, you know, said, no, this is nothing, you know, let's wait and see. You know, in medicine, we have to go right down the middle and we have to act on what is the worst case scenario and protect people's lives and health based on if that were to happen. And then we have to go on data, if we know that, what's likely, and we have to try to strike a balance. So you guys may have heard me say in the last week, there's a saying uh, that I love to use in medicine. When you hear hooves outside the door, think horses and not zebras. So for all the people who say, and they're not wrong, well, what about the flu? What about seasonal influenza? Yeah, the flu, which I talk about every year, um, both in my practice and on national television, has a PR problem because we report numbers that are jaw-dropping. You know, right now, we're waiting today. The CDC will release its seasonal flu estimates. Last week, they estimated 20,000 U.S. flu-associated deaths. But people don't listen to that. And now that there's a new kid on the block and people are saying, you know, we don't know about this. We have to take it seriously. Look at what's happening in other parts of the world. We want to protect uh, Americans and make sure that doesn't happen here. Now people are interested in the flu. And, and I'm glad about that. But understand, and this is really the important part, this is not a competition. Uh, the flu can be mild. The flu can be deadly. Coronavirus can be mild and the coronavirus can be deadly. And the difference between the two is there's treatments and a vaccine that can help us with the flu, even though they're far from ideal. We don't have either of those things with this novel coronavirus, nor do we even know how it will behave. So that's why there is so much uncertainty. And you guys have heard me say it in medicine and in science. It is so important to say, I don't know what we know, what we don't know. And a lot of times what we don't know can be as important. Do we have, well, 
the, the 1918 flu, there are some lessons that people have taken from that. I read something recently by Eric Jaffe, who said that, these, that there were different outcomes in different urban areas then mm -hmm. based on some factors, including closing schools and restricting public gatherings. That seemed mm -hmm. to really work. We're talking about sports here. That's been um, early intervention, like the timing of when you did that. And then what I want to ask you about, because already Major League Baseball probably didn't act early enough. True. Um, ACC True. tournaments going, that sh probably shouldn't happen. That's not early. But then, finally, there's duration. How long you keep that in place? And in the sports world, what we're interested in are, and I, it, it's unknowable, but what we start hearing is two to three months, it's going to get worse before it gets better. It, to the best of your knowledge, is there any kind of estimate of how long we won't be watching sports? No, and I'll tell you, anyone who is throwing out numbers, uh, I'd like to look into the crystal ball that they're looking into. No one knows. Um, you know, and so it's important, first of all, to put this into timeline context, historical perspective. Um, and also, as you mentioned, and, and you know, I know that your, your viewers like mine at ABC News are acutely aware of this, as am I, uh, there have been a lot of missteps in the rearview mirror behind us. Let's not waste time right now looking back. Let's look where we are today and try to look a little bit down the road um, and get our ducks um, in a row. And I think that that's important. But when you think about two to three months without sports, mm -hmm. that's just inconceivable.